This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I have the lovely and beautiful uh, star of HOTS, Lisa London, on the phone. Her and her beautiful red hair. How do you do, Lisa? I do absolutely wonderfully. How do you do? I'm doing fine as long as the equipment here uh, doesn't conk out on me. <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do need these uh, technical things we use, don't we? Yeah. Well, I was connected with you through Stephen Joyner, and um, I'm going to assume that you, you had uh, met him through social media because that's where you, I encountered him. Yes. Yes, he has uh, sent me all kinds of people. And um, you definitely mentioned the movie Hots. Now, Hots was kind of ahead of its time, following in the footsteps of National Lampoon's Animal House, which was the uh, uh, kind of one of those comedies that took raunch uh, <laughs> into overgear. And absolutely, I, you know, it was it, we were known as being just so absolutely risque. Yeah, and of course. Um, you you starred with uh, three other women, who of course had an opposed, but uh, weren't, like, weren't accepted into the fraternity, and so you went out about to steal their boyfriends. We certainly did, and we accomplished it absolutely more than your wildest dreams could imagine. <laughs> it was an amazing thing to get cast in a lead in a film that became a cult classic, and it was literally. My, I think it was, yeah, it was basically my first audition. Well, um, of course, it highlights with uh, uh, both opposing uh, cheerleader teams or fraternity teams on uh, at a football game where, of course, uh, losers have to, of course, uh, remove articles of clothing. And... Uh, <laughs> you had uh did you have any any issues with doing scenes like this i have um a very free spirit i grew up in palm springs and hawaii places where you're practically half naked all the time anyway and i just i i always laugh at people that have a problem with nudity but they have no problem with violence and and for me i mean it, it consensual sex of adults is a good thing. I think it's a lot better than showing something that could be damned. And I think all that uh, a film like Hots can do is make people very happy and laugh a lot and smile a lot. And I mean, it's a testament to the film itself that, you know, everyone's copied it since then and it is a cult classic. Yeah, and uh, I've mentioned uh, before, like um, movies like Sex Tape and Cameron Diaz with this no nude, co um, no nude clause in her contra contract. At least that's from what I'm hearing. And I'm like, why cast actresses in a movie that don't want to do a nude scene? Why not cast people that are down for it and have uh, have no issue with it? I've never understood that, and I think America is the only country in the world where that's the case, where actors or actresses are still, um, it's still taboo, it's still a provincial thing in a lot of people's minds, and I don't judge it, but uh, I think there's nothing wrong with nudity as long as it's done uh, in good taste, and by that, I mean, you know, even in a comedy that is considered a TNA film, it's still quote-unquote good taste. If um, you know, it's, it's shot beautifully and it's fun and it's part of the humor, which is exactly what, um, you know, the couple of times I've done nudity and comedy have done. And, um, and then, of course, when I was in the hands of Clint Eastwood in Sudden Impact, um, that was my first dramatic role. And um, I did nudity in that, but I trusted him. And it's one of the most intense, great shots in cinema history. So I'm really proud of that. Absolutely no regrets of any of the nudity I've ever done. Yeah, I see. I, I was watching some clips recently uh, from uh, from Hots, and of course, uh, of course, on YouTube it's hard to find, find clips of the big climatic scene, which is the football game. Yes, um, the strip football game. You got to get the words right, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. But um, is this movie available on Blu-ray? 
Oh, yeah, you can get it just about anywhere. I do a lot of autograph shows all over the world, and people get it all the time. I guess you can get it like on Blu-ray, you know, from Amazon Prime, all that stuff. But it's also so amazing to me um, that uh, the only time I've ever been to the Cannes Film Festival was with my first film, Hots. And I am going this year with, for a film I star in that's going to be doing the big uh, world premiere, you know, red carpet press, con film festival, and it's called Do You See Me? And it's literally 40 years later. So I feel like, wow, this is a pretty cool life I'm leading right now. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get to that film in a minute, too, because awesome. I definitely want to talk about uh, your, your new films. Awesome. But... Um, I know I've seen some uh, clips from Hots, and uh, it's been a while for me, but I know there was, um, if I remember, I, I like I like messy humor as well, because I grew up with that kind of messy slapstick humor, right, and I believe right. there's a, a, a moment in it um, where, uh, catch me, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, where there is a pie fight in it. And I love pie fights. Oh, there certainly is. And I got to go up thousands of feet in a hot air balloon. And there's nothing like being in a hot air balloon with a stuntman dressed in a bear suit because we actually have a real bear in the film. But, of course, the real bear couldn't be in a hot air balloon with me. And I'm the one that, that initiates the pie fight. And I definitely uh, get the better of that other sorority. <laughs> I, I did have an aerial view, so I had a, I had an edge. Okay, so you weren't in the receiving end. <laughs> oh, no. I was the giving end. <laughs> so so you were throwing them at the, the other girls in the sorority? Yes, oh, okay. while they were sunbathing. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. For maximum impact, right? <laughs> Yeah, tell tell me uh, some of your uh, some of the, the most challenging moments that you have for Hots. Uh, some of the most challenging, probably um, the hot air balloon landing would be right up there because there's no way to land a balloon except for a crash landing, and they call it that because it's exactly that. So I literally landed my little hot bikini and shorts and sneakers in a huge sheep farm way outside of LA in this place called Thousand Oaks <laughs> and 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 workers on horseback you know thought they were coming to our rescue we were fine because that's the way you're supposed to do it but it looked like there was going to be you know this dreadful crash of, of these poor people inside all hurt I was scratched up a bit but other than that it was a pretty exciting time yeah well um other uh films that you got listed on here as well that uh of course um hots all these years later your first starring role actually i should ask you about the other girls because uh i know you worked with a lot of them again on your next film happy hooker goes to hollywood yes which is actually i'm being interviewed for a huge book that's coming out about canon films because apparently i've done a couple films for them and apparently that Happy Hooker Goes Hollywood was the first one they did within the United States before they became the mega film company that they were. Um, the other girls, uh, it's it's so sad, actually. Um, a couple of the beauties are gone. Um, they passed away. One of my best friends was the T in Hots, Pamela Bryant, and she passed away um, about five years ago now. And Angela Ames, who um, wasn't one of the hot girls, but she was on our sorority, she died many years ago, very young. But um, I, di I, I just recently saw Susan Kiger. She came to a play that I did at the Elephant Theater that I also produced and starred in, and that's pretty amazing seeing her again. I haven't seen her in like 20 years. And um, I don't know what Kimberly Cameron's doing, the, the other one. The last of the, of the four Hots girls. I don't know what she's up to. So what? How did? What was the uh, connection that uh, they ended up being happy? Hooker goes to Hollywood as well. Uh, it honestly, it was literally just a coincidence. Well, you know, a lot of us had the same agents who were submitted to the same things. But also, you got to remember, these were the days in Hollywood where things weren't digital and people couldn't self-submit. So the, the act of getting in for an audition, the amount of competition was so much less than it is today. So it, it, you did see the same faces from time to time. 
a lot more than you would now. Well, I unfortunately have not seen this movie, so tell me about your role in uh, in the Happy Hooker Goes to Hollywood. Are you, uh, are you it th- was it was a literal dream come true. Um, I I've always adored Marilyn Monroe, and they asked me if I could do a Marilyn Monroe voice, and I said I think I can. Should I just give it a try? So I got to do my character Laurie just like this the whole time. <laughs> So that was really fun, and I got to work with some amazing actors, starting with Martine Beswick, who was a Bond girl a couple of times, and Richard Deacon from the Dick Van Dyke Show, and Adam West, Batman, and Chris Lemon, Jack Lemon's son, and I became really good friends, and to have him have his dad come to the screening, the big premiere in Westwood, I mean, it was it was just, it was a fabulous, fabulous time. I got to wear the most gorgeous clothes, and it was just I can't tell you how wonderful that was. It was just a perfect experience every minute of it. Yeah. And, um, of course, uh, Adam West, of course, was in that movie as well. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you mentioned Sudden Impact. Now, um, um, I interviewed not somebody from Sudden Impact, but I interviewed the daughter, the eldest daughter of Nancy Parsons, who is in the film. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. That was my first dramatic part. And um, I'd actually met um, uh, one of the producers at Warner Brothers um, at a party. And he said, look, I'm going to get you an audition. You're going to have to go up the ranks, even though, you know, uh, you know, Clint Eastwood has last say. You're still going to go through the regular thing of going through the casting director. And it was the fabulous famous casting director, Marion Doherty. And I read for her, and um, uh, I guess it was a great reading because then she t- suggested me to read for Clint, which I did, and he cast me, and he gave me probably one of the greatest compliments I've ever had as an actress. And uh, I, what I learned from him was just invaluable, and it's his, his whole amazing way of making movie after movie that's this great film, always on budget, always with respect for every member of his cast and crew and trusting them. And um, I'm about ready to branch into producing myself. Um, My first uh, film that I'm going to be actually one of the executive producers on, so not just, you know, a figurehead of telling somebody about somebody else. That's what associate producers always are. And I can't wait to do this. It's like a kind of like a Goonies film, like a kid film, but with a lot of heart. And um, I am going to be acting in it, too. But it's called The Black Widow's Club, and it's directed by Corbin Timbrook, who's a great friend of mine that I've done films for also. So we hope to be shooting that July and August of this year, and it'll be the first film that I'm in it. So, yeah, everything Clint taught me as an actress, I'm going to try to mimic what he does as a producer as well. Oh, fantastic. And, of course, you were also in an early film with Johnny Depp, Private Resort. Yes, and that, I mean, come on. Uh, I think we were supposed to be there two weeks, and we ended up being there three or four. This was in Key West, you know, Florida Keys, the most gorgeous place, famous, gorgeous five-star resort. But there was hurricane weather a lot, so we had to, like, you know, not shoot certain days. And it was Andy Dice Clay and Rob Morrow and um, Hector Elizondo, Leslie Easterbrook. It was like a star-studded, fabulous cast. And I have a really funny story about um, Johnny Depp and I. It was our first screen kiss for both of us. And everyone thought, oh, wow, man, this is great. They're really into this because when the director yelled cut, I we were still connected and it wasn't because we were still kissing. It was because we were both so nervous about doing a kiss that we both had wads of gum in our mouth that got stuck. Wow. And everyone thinks it's so sexy and glamorous doing, you know, kissing scenes. But for us, it was just, you know, two kids figuring out how to do it for the first time on film. Oh. Well, kissing you cannot be a bad thing for a guy. <laughs> 
Well, I, I've been told it's, it's actually a, a very easy, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was it like uh, working with Johnny Depp that early in his career? He was fabulous. You, you know, his um, he's also a musician and, and people that are really into music and love music and play music, I find are just such, you know, incredible artists and an artist soul full of love and, and just fun and he was game for anything and he was also very lucky actually that I was as thin and small as I was because I play a drunk that's constantly passing out that he's slinging over his shoulder so <laughs> I think he uh, he would say he loved working with me as well <laughs> yeah and of course uh, you're cast as the redhead in Dragnet with Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks Yes, that was amazing. That was, uh, you know, in Dragnet, they did this uh, uh, riff on the Playboy Mansion, and I was actually the only girl for the second time cast in something about, you know, where I played a Playboy centerfold, but um, I've actually never been one. I've been in Playboy Sex and Cinema a few times, but I just chose not to do the Playmate route, And um, but I sure love playing playmates it was a lot of fun and i got to sing in it too and of course work with christopher Plummer and dabney coleman as well oh yeah you don't see dabney coleman too much anymore well wasn't he on boardwalk empire i think he was on boardwalk empire oh was he i don't watch a, a lot of television actor. so uh yeah he's a brilliant actor yeah and i mean my god he's got to be getting up there now so he's probably just doing exactly what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it <laughs> And there's a few other films there on your list that uh, I got to bring up, of course, a Naked Cage, a <laughs> women in prison yes. film. <laughs> That's amazing. Quentin Tarantino just uh, screened it at a theater in Los Angeles um, because he just loved it so much and thought it was such a perfect example of the beauty of film and how you know things are shot on digital now. So he restored it, and, and it was sold out, packed, screening uh the q a we could not get off the stage it gave me so much joy and it just humbled me to no end and made me so proud that we did a film that was truly ahead of its time showing racial issues prison issues just um and it's it's a it's really a great film it stands up and it's by a uh direct by the name of paul nichols okay yes and i sing in that too um i think uh a song on the soundtrack that oh you get to sing in it <laughs> yeah well i was the, um one of the lead singers of a band called penna on columbia cbs records in the late uh early to mid 80s actually and we're still super famous all over the rest of the world but we we were our 15 minutes of andy warhol super fame here in america but it was just the most amazing opportunity in the world to do that and i got to live in germany and we had a, a chart-topping record. Our, our, one of our songs was used when the Lakers played the Bulls in basketball. I mean, it was really a great experience. And, of course, uh, you did two films uh, for director Andy Sedaris, uh, where you played yeah. character Rocky, Savage Beach, and Guns. Yes, and that was amazing to shoot in Hawaii. is always just such an absolute blessing and joy and gift. And... He was so ahead of his time, speaking of ahead of his time, because he made, like, movies for $700,000 that looked like, you know, mega million-dollar movies with explosions. But his twist was all the gorgeous girls with the bad guys, or not the bad guys, but, but the the stars, the heroes, like, you know, instead of um, uh, the men always being the ones that, you know, are blowing things up and shooting everybody. <laughs> So that was amazing, and I'm still friends with his gorgeous wife who produced it all, Arlene Sedaris, and I'm I'm just hoping she'll do another one because I told her I'd, I'd slip into a bikini in a hot tub and then take it off any time for her. <laughs> <laughs> so nudity just it doesn't bother you at all, like it it, it, it it what I and I think that's cool because like like we said earlier, there's so many A-listers that will not go there, and it's like again a, a big issue for them. But it's great to hear somebody like yourself that's, you know, you're you're not ashamed of it. You're not, you, you, you well, know. Well, let's put it this way. I think our greatest, there's two two actresses you could that are known as being our greatest 
living actresses, right? Mm -hmm. That's Meryl Streep and Helen Mirren. And Helen Mirren has done probably just as much, if not more, nudity than I have. Or, I mean, there's so many that have done it that are just, so, you know, so great. So I think it, it has changed from that. I really do. I mean, look at Isabelle Huppert. I mean, the nudity, the rape scene, everything, and, you know, up, up for an Oscar. I mean, it's, it's, I do think it's changing. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my current favorite is Emma Stone. <laughs> oh, she's adorable. Yeah, she's adorable. Yeah. And a uh, redhead. <laughs> yeah, redhead. There, you're catching a trend with me here, huh? <laughs> oh, good. Do you ever f familiar with that uh, website, Mister Skin? No, I don't. I oh, don't you should one. you should look that up because this guy has been on the Howard Stern show many times. He gives out awards for nudity. He calls his uh, an anatomy awards. <laughs> and well, I've, I've 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 won quite a few of those. <laughs> I wonder if I'm on any of his list, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's I think it's only even something to discuss in America. Seriously, no other country in the world thinks twice about. Um, incorporating it into their art. What's funny, though, is he knows the exact second a nude scene appears in a movie. I have like, heard of this. I have heard of this. Yes, yes, yes. I've heard of this. <laughs> guarantee you, you're on that website somewhere. I'm sure I am. I'm sure I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he, just the way he phrases things and words things. Exactly. Um, well, it's so funny because a lot of the stuff that I've been getting lately, um, it's um, yes, you know, just really substantial, great, meaty roles, and um, and a lot of times, uh, I know that I I would never have met these people if it wasn't for you know the the less intense stuff that I've done. You know, what I mean, because they, they know me and love me from the fun stuff that I've done as well. Yeah. And a couple other films I want to bring up before we talk about your new stuff. Um, of course, okay. The Godson. I'm a big Rodney Dangerfield fan. <laughs> uh, that was so heavenly. That was My scenes with him will be in my heart and soul forever, because I, I do believe that was his last film. I think he might have done uh, some kind of TV after that, but I don't think he did another movie after that. Yeah. What was it like working with him? Did you give him some was, respect? Oh, oh yes. Uh, well, it was fabulous because I, I literally I have to, my entrance in the film is falling into his. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've got to bring this other next film up because I've done a couple interviews from it, although I never discussed this film in particular. <laughs> Samurai Cop 2 Deadly Vengeance, my very first interview back in 2015, April of 2015, was with Tommy Wiseau of The Room. Oh, my God. And I, I can't tell you how much fun it was to work with him and how much I love him and what a pro and what a doll he is. And, you know, he's, he's like totally having a resurgence in his career, and I'm so happy for him. And, um, yeah, Samurai Cop 2, directed by Greg Hatanaka. Um, who I've worked with a bunch of times, including something else we'll talk about in a little bit. But Samurai Cop 2 Deadly Vengeance, of course, I, I had no, I, I didn't know about Samurai Cop 1 because that was before my, my time. And, and this movie, just the heat that this had behind it and the concept, and, the, and again, a sold-out premiere where people were flipping out laughing the entire time. Because it was, it was very interesting. Um, a, a critic said something about it like, Everyone was on the same page to deliver the same film. And it just came together, and it's magical. And I urge everyone to watch that film because it is fabulous. Yeah, and of course, uh, another interviewee that is in that from, uh, and I interviewed this person in uh, July of 2015. I think she's gorgeous, Christine DeBell. Oh, my, she's one of my best friends. Christine uh, DeVell is one of my best friends. She's literally my first girlfriend I made when I moved to Hollywood when I was 19 years old. And um, we're in another one for them called Holy Terror on Amazon Prime. This one's directed um, by Greg Hatanaka's associate, Rich Mallory, and it's doing incredibly well on Amazon Prime. We're getting some great reviews, and that was just 
too much fun. I mean, to because it's like a modern day exorcist, and it's you know, it's yeah. got just the right amount of humor. And I play a, I play uh, uh, the niece. There's two nieces in it, and I'm their favorite auntie. And I'm also I just happen to be a medium. <laughs> Well, you know, I love Christine. I had her on. Uh, she's it was, the best. I had her on in July of 2015, and um, she's the first interview I got through Twitter of all places. And I'm still connected with her a little bit. I don't talk to her a whole lot, but when well, I'm on, you know what? Social media has 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 given my career like a whole new life. I mean, I'm working more than I've ever worked before, and uh, it's just it's it's really pretty fabulous you you have to know how to use it and not be um addicted to it too because a lot of people i think spend a little bit too much time like uh, looking at their little phones instead of really living but i think you can use it for sure to connect with your fans and to remind people the world of, of what you're doing and and it's just it's a great thing well, you know, I, I talked to her about Meatballs and Alice in Wonderland, you know, with a, a X-rated musical comedy and various stuff she did. And uh, I, I've always liked Christine. I, I tell you, as far as Meatballs go, and I, and I like the fact that, uh, you know, she's not ashamed of any nudity or anything she's done. But what I like about her, I said I said to her, I said, if if I had went to summer camp and there was somebody as beautiful as she, she is uh, as a counselor, I'd never go home. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, yeah every once in a while i'll say something to her on uh twitter i know on her birthday i wished her happy birthday and i know she always appreciates that so yeah I'm, I'm, you, when you see her you tell her i said hello of course yeah so when you two get together i mean i, I tell you there's not another girl out there that can uh, take the attention away from either one of you <laughs> Thank you, and it's it's been such a blessing. We've worked together now a few times. Holy Terror, we worked together a lot on that one. We're going to be doing a few more for Greg Hatanaka, and um, we do autograph shows together, too. We did the Chicago uh, Hollywood show. They call it the Hollywood show, but we did it in Chicago, and it was just, it was unbelievable. I mean, we, how many people came out to see us, and we were just blown yeah. away and had such a great time in that city. I get a couple nice autographs of Christine in the mail, you know, and uh, I thought it was really nice of her to uh, sign a picture for me and uh, send it to me. And in return, I sent her one of me. And uh, I asked her if I was as nice looking as Wheels, uh, the guy. Or, or the guy that, <laughs> and she said, I'm better looking than Wheels. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what you're doing now, because I know you got, uh, I looked at Internet Movie Database, and you've got a lot of projects in the post-production or in-production or filming, and uh, yes, I want you to promote yes. those. Okay, thank you. Well, um, the first one, of course, that I wanted to talk about was Holy Terror, and encourage everybody to please watch it on Amazon Prime, and Samar Kotze, you can get on everything, too. And... Um, Uh, The other thing that I'm so excited about is the Black Widow Club that I'm also going to be producing. And we we don't shoot that until July or August, but I'll I'll blast away on my my Facebook page. Uh, It's Lisa London. Uh, You can go to Facebook and uh, like my page, and then you'll know everything that I'm doing. And you can also check out everything I'm doing on IMDb. Okay. uh, The International Movie Database. And I'm so excited about Do You See Me, the film that I'm going to be going to the Cannes Film Festival for in a few weeks. And that's going to be on everything, too. Um, That may even be in theaters in the beginning as well. I'll know more after um, I meet with all the producers in France soon. And that's a really cool film. It's about the scary, weird clowns that were terrorizing people. It's based on that. And everyone is afraid of creepy clowns, right? <laughs> yeah. What's the name of this film again? It's called Do You See Me? Okay. Yeah, Do You See Me? And then I'm also cast in a lead in a great film uh, script called Nearly Departed. Um, they pushed uh, when that's starting. It was supposed to start um, a couple months ago, but they're changing that. Um, and I'm going to be shooting that in Florida, so that's going to be great. And I've got a few others that I'm doing for Greg Hatanaka coming up. Um, uh, of course, on TV, you can see me now on demand on Law & Order SVU 
or on the coroner, I speak for the dead. And I think that's about it. I think I've, I can't think of anything else that's, oh, and I'm, I'm in a huge commercial that's running 24 seven right now too. It's actually to get people to be tested for hep C. Oh yeah. And that was just amazing to shoot. Cause I got to shoot that in Poland, Slovakia, Czech Republic. It was just unbelievable. What a shoot. Just so incredible. And you're returning to the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. You, you say it's your I first know. time since Hots? Yes. My first and only time I've ever gone was with Hots. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Wow. You, I know. You, 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 it feels surreal. <laughs> you know, I've never been to any of the film festivals outside the one that's here in New Brunswick, the Silverway Film Festival, but... Uh, I've never been outside New Brunswick, so I don't get a lot of travel in. The end. Well, well, I've been to I've been to quite a few film festivals now because I star in a fabulous short film that I was nominated for Best Actress at the New York International Film Festival, which is a pretty big deal, and it's called Finding Mama, and it's directed by a wonderful female director, Anna Simone Scott. She wrote it as well, <clears throat> and. We got into quite a few festivals. We're up for a few more. You should have us come to the New Brunswick Film Festival. I'd love that. Yeah, well, yeah, it'd be great. Uh, you know, it's a matter of uh, whether the people behind it can uh, will bring people in. I, I, th I exactly. think it would be great. I, I'd certainly encourage it. What's this film about? Finding Mama. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so wonderful. It's like a modern-day Tennessee Williams streetcar named Desire Vine. Okay. I play... And I, I play an aging stripper okay. who's finally had it. She's with this absolute low-life mechanic boyfriend, played by Ronnie Marmo, who's absolutely wonderful in the film. And it's basically a romantic dance about the two of them and their relationship. And, and everyone who's seen it just adores it and because... We all have issues, and no relationship is easy. <laughs> and it's super well written and beautifully shot and directed, and I'm really proud of it, Finding Mama. And we, it's, it's not out anywhere except in festivals right now because it's still on the festival circuit. Okay. Wow. Out of all, all, all the films that you've done, what would you say is the most complicated thing, challenging thing you've had to do? Because you've got a big list of films. Yeah. Um, I think the most... I, I never really get into a role because I when, when I run the reel of, of my, my film, my work, in my head, everything has a special spot in my heart everything is something that is just um i adored it and and learned from it and gave it my all um i think it's gosh i think probably one of, one of the most difficult things i ever did was jumping into law and order svu because of the circumstances i was supposed to shoot um a certain date that was switched around because it was when Mariska Hargitay um, had a punctured lung and, and they had to redo the schedule. And, of course, coming from Los Angeles, I had to fly to New York. So it was like all of a sudden I just had to be there and shoot the, like the very next morning. So literally no sleep at all, start shooting. And it was a, a tracking shot where I'm, I'm walking, doing stuff, and, and delivering my lines. And it's a super intense scene that sets up the whole um episode and uh but it was fabulous and working with christopher maloney was fabulous and it ended up being one of the best things i've done one of the most um absolute uh, uh piece of work that i'm really proud of wow yeah and so i mean you get a lot of stuff stuff come up is there anything else that, and of that uh, you want to plug I think I've I've plugged away, and and people like I said, you go to my Facebook page or IMDb because I keep, you know, putting stuff up on there that's new too. Is there anything else you want to ask me about? Well, this one you're doing with Christine DeBell, Holy Terror. When's that coming out? It's out. That's the one. Oh, that's on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. yeah, it's out right now. And please, please watch it, because the more people watch it, um, Amazon Prime does this wonderful thing where it gives back 
to um, filmmakers, and and they're just going to keep putting us in more movies. <laughs> well, I want to see you and Christine in more movies. Good. Well, you have to get um, uh, Holy Terror on Amazon Prime because it's great. Yeah. Well, I and find... we're, bo- we're both in Sa- we're both in Sarah Marcotte too, too. But Chris's role is bigger in Holy Terror. Yeah, I heard she's only got a small role in uh, Samurai Cop 2. Yeah, well, th- you'll see why, because almost everyone has a small role. You'll see why, because it's just, it is a a delicious uh, uh, festival of characters. <laughs> That's all I can say. I just want people to watch it. It's so great. Well, I hope Tommy Wiseau's role isn't small. <laughs> no, it's not, and he's fabulous at it. And our scene, oh, oh my God, it's it's just it's well tell me have you seen the room no i never have (laughs) (laughs) but don't tell tommy that (laughs) well i guess they're doing uh james franco is doing a movie exactly yeah i'm so happy for tommy right now and and I, i was in acting class with james franco so it'll be fabulous oh yeah yeah so you got any uh, charities or anything that you're involved in? I, I have quite a few um, uh, children's uh, charities and organizations that I donate my time and, and, and money to when I can. And um, in specifically, uh, I guess um, the Children's Fund okay. is the one that I love the most. Okay. And also... Um, Oh God, I'm spacing on the name of it right now, but there's an Israeli research fund um, where they've done the most amazing things on the planet. I mean, people forget that Israel has literally come up with some of the most life-saving drugs and techniques medically for for the human race in the last 10 years than any other country. So I, I research stuff like that a lot, and anything that can just... Help us stay alive and healthy, and of course, anything that protects children is always near and dear to me. And the environment. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, we're drawing close to the end of our time. Not quite an hour, but uh, I think we got the gist of uh, our uh, interview in. Uh, I know we have a few technical That's difficulties fun. going into this, but uh, I think things are uh, working out here fine now. I've been saving. Wonderful. I've been constantly saving here, so hopefully nothing conks out on me because I, I would. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Constantly saving. That sounds like a script. <laughs> well, we only had like through just a few minutes before when it did that, so I don't know. Right. We, we literally, I think we were probably five minutes in. Yeah. Talking about hots. Yeah. Hots is. About hot. Yeah. Is Hots the movie you're most proud of? Um, I wouldn't say it's the movie I'm most proud of. I'm, like I said, I'm proud of everything I've done. Yeah. Um, uh, the movie I'm most proud of, mm, God, I mean, Sudden Impact is up there, huge. Uh, uh, but so is also a, a little independent film that I did called The Indian that won a whole bunch of awards. It starred... Sal Landy and Matt Dallas and Corbin Timbrook, because um, Corbin, the director I mentioned, he's also an actor, and Jimmy Fitzpatrick is in that one as well. And that was directed by a guy, first-time director, brilliant script, named James Gorey. And um, we literally won so much in so many festivals, and I'm so proud of that film because it, it stands up to any award-winning film on any level. And that's called The Indian, and I think you can get that on Netflix. Well, I'm definitely going to be checking out Holy Terror. Anything that's got you yes. and Christine in it, I mean, I'll, I'll, yes, I'll check that please out. Do. <laughs> Absolutely. Please do. Well, um, and of course, uh, you got the Cannes Film Festival again. Again, what what's playing for the Cannes Film Festival for you? Uh, do you see me? Yep. Okay. That is. Oh, and the... I just thought of I just thought of something else too. A, oh, sure. a couple of other things. Um, I've also got a film coming out called Eight Days Carlos. Okay. Shot okay. Ago, and that's coming out soon. I don't have details on that, but it's really great. And that's um, directed by um, Jacob. Yeah. You there? 
Yes, oh. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. You cut out for, for just a second there. Ah, okay. Anyway, yeah, Eight Days Carlos, that'll be coming out soon. And also, um, gosh, there was something else. What else did I just do recently that I forgot to mention? God, it's good to be so busy that I can't remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Hold on. Let's see what else. Uh, ask me some questions, and it'll trigger my brain. Ask you some questions? As, <laughs> as, 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 as another movie with another lovely person like Christine? Um, <laughs> well, oh, let's see. Well, I am in a film called Darling Nikki, another Greg Hatsunaka, that, um, that should be, uh, should be um, we're going to finish that soon. Too. That was kind of put, postponed because we were doing a bunch of other films for Greg. He's, he's like a Wild West kind of shooter. You never know what, which movie you're going to be. He'll say, hey, got a movie of West and blah, 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 and all of a sudden you'll be doing, you know, a period piece from the Middle Ages or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, I think I've mentioned everything. I just can't think of anything else that I might have forgotten. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I can't think of anything now. Well, a special thanks out to uh, Steve Joyner for connecting us. and uh, Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, I know he can get you on a bunch of podcasts as well. And, yes. um, yeah, I was happy to have you on here, and I'm, I'll, I'll send this out as soon as I can. And um, I'll connect with you on Facebook, and I'll, uh, and I'll um, send it to you, and you can put it up. Again, the link awesome. link here will be temporary because eventually it's going to land on the YouTube channel, but it'll be up there for right. a little while for you, especially for uh, what you're promoting. So, yeah. Sweet. So before you go, could yes. I get you to do a plug for my show? Of course. What do you want me to say? Well, uh, just say your name and um, say your um, – okay, my name's Greg Gilbert. My show is called Python's Paradise. Python like the snake. Python's paradise. Okay. Yeah. And um, out of New Brunswick, Canada. Okay. Have you ever been out this way? I have not. As far as I've been to Toronto and I've been to British Columbia. I always tell people uh, uh, our closest celebrities are probably the trailer part boys. Yeah, are you familiar <laughs> with them? No. Oh. <laughs> I like that, though. Oh, you'll are probably you, like them. I love it. You, we, okay, so <laughs> when do you want me to do the plug? Do it now. Shoot. Okay. Hi, this is Lisa London, and it was an absolute blast to be with Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. What a great name for a show. And what a great place to be broadcasting from New Brunswick. Yeah. You still there? I'm still here. Okay, you kind of cut out there. I don't know what's with the connection, but uh, anyway, that's okay. We're Did talking. Did it worse? You want me to? Did you want me to do it again? I'll give another shot. Why not? Okay. Hi, this is Lisa London, and it's been an absolute blast to be with Greg Gilbert on the Python's Paradise Show from New Brunswick, Canada. There you go. Bye for now. Yes. And the movie you first starred in, Hots, coming up on its, uh, what is it, uh, 40th anniversary coming up in yes. a, just a couple yes. of years. And we it's know amazing. why it's called Hots, because you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you, and uh, I'll be in touch with you. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. Yep. You take care. Bye. Bye-bye.